we'll have this, there we go, being recorded. So you can watch this after the fact on michaels.com on their community classroom page, which is a really amazing. They have such a library of classes, all of our Let's Paint, all our trend classes are on there. So if you're not able to paint tonight, whether you don't have your supplies or you're just watching to be inspired, you can always go back and watch when you have some time, especially over the holidays, if you have some free time. So um, if anybody has any questions, just let us know and Jesse's gonna get started. Hey. Hey guys, like Kira said, my name is Jesse. Um, if you have been with us before, paint with us, welcome back. If not, welcome for the first time. Um, I'm gonna let you know what supplies we have tonight. So the canvas I'm using um, is nine by 18 inches. So nine by 18 inches. If you couldn't find this canvas, cause it is a little bit of a specific size, any longish canvas will do. Even if you have just a, a regular rectangular canvas, um, even if it's not, you know, a little bit on the longer side, that's fine too. All you're going to do is just make your Christmas tree match the size of your canvas. If you have a square canvas, you'll just make sort of a wider Christmas tree, or you could even do two Christmas trees to fill it up. Okay. So please don't stress. I know it's, you know, it's a little bit different size than we normally do. So don't stress about your canvas size. Um, just, you know, the preferably it's a little bit longer than normal. All right. And then I've got my palette paper, which is just wax coated paper to mix my paint on. I've got my paper towels and my water basin for washing my brushes. And the brushes I'll be using um, is this great variety pack from um, CraftSmart, I believe. Yeah, from Michaels. So um, the brushes I'll be using is my 3 fourths inch flat brush. So anything that looks kind of like this is totally fine. I will be using my um, number 12 flat brush. So it's like a, a half inch flat or something similar. And I've also got a round brush. This is a number four round brush that comes in that pack. But any medium round brush will, will work for this. It's for going to be for the tree. So any medium to large round brush is fine. So that's pretty much the three brushes that I'll be using for this. I've also got some stencil tape with me. So this is important for this one because that's how we're going to do the buffalo plaid. So make sure you have stencil tape. Um, whatever size tape you're at, whatever size tape you have is going to be the size of your plaid. So as you can see here, my um, the width of my tape is the width of my plaid. So if you have, say, you know, a larger roll of tape at home, that's okay. You're just going to have chunkier plaid. So just something to keep in mind, the width of your tape is going to be how big your plaid is. Um, and then as always, we'll be using our um, folk art acrylic paints. So our favorite paints, they're super rich and creamy. They have great coverage. And the colors we have tonight um, are hunter green. So just a nice dark green color. Clover, so it's like a medium green, like a grassy green color. Please feel free to substitute anything. If you have something similar, just use that. It doesn't need to be the exact color. Engine red, which is just a nice, bright, Christmassy red. We've got pure black, which is again, just, just black. If you've got licorice or some other black, that's fine too. And then for a little bit of um, extra, we've got some treasure gold. So this is a super shiny, super metallic paint um, that we make under our folk art brand. And of course you can get this at Michael's. Um, this is just the, the traditional gold color. So we've got a little bit of treasure gold here with us as well. And then I also wanna mention, I have a hair dryer here. Um, and that's just because, you know, we want to keep it within an hour. Uh, so we dry um, as we go. Sometimes we'll paint and then we'll dry so we can move on to the next step. So if you don't have a hairdryer at home, maybe you can stick your painting in front of a fan um, or you can just sort of take your time and pause a little and wait for the recording to be released. And then you can go back and you can pause it as much as you want once the recording is released. So without further ado, we can go ahead and get started. So the first color we're going to grab is our engine red. So I'm going to grab my engine red and put a little bit of that on my palette paper. And I'm going to grab my 3 fourths inch flat brush. So anything that looks like this, a medium to large size flat brush. And I'm going to start at the bottom. I'm going to start base coating my painting with red. So we're not going to go all the way up because we don't need to. As you can see here, the red's only mm, just the bottom chunk. It's like a little less than half. So we're only going to go up just, you know, a little above that and it doesn't need to be perfect because we're going to tape it off to put the black on. So we just want to get that covered in red. Does not need to be perfect because again, we're going to tape it off with our tape later once this is dry. We just want to get that nice even coat of red down and this is going to be the base of our buffalo plaid background. So again, nothing fancy here. I'm just base coating it. And you could use engine. a square or a rectangle canvas. Either one would work. Absolutely. Absolutely. So right now, this is just, if you wanted to have the whole background buffalo plaid, by all means, this is just um, the area where a buffalo plaid is going to be. So you can paint your whole canvas in buffalo plaid. And if you're going to do that, paint the whole thing red now. 
where you just have the bottom chunk here in Buffalo Platts. That's what we're painting now. So if you've got like a square canvas, just, you know, paint the bottom third or so. Okay, yep, and it's more. a nine by 18 canvas. Yes, it's nine by 18. Yep. And this buffalo uh, technique Jesse's going to do is one of my very favorites. And I did it live for the first time. And it was awesome. And it truly works and makes it so it's like the best trick ever. It looks like it's really hard um, and yeah. complicated, but it's not. We're going to break it down. It's really simple and fun. You're going to want to make everything about buffalo plaid. Yeah, I'm excited. It's great for like all different seasons too, like fall, Christmas, real farmhouse, mm -hmm. like into spring even. Yeah, you could do like a blue and white, like a gingham. That'd be cute. Yeah. All right, so you can see, as you can see here, I've just got the bottom chunk. Um, it's probably, it's. I, I kind of went about halfway up for this part. It's just a nice even coat of engine red. And as you can see here, I'm not worried about that line there. It's pretty messy. Cause again, we're gonna dry it and then we're gonna tape it off to paint the black. So we don't need to have that perfect now. So that said, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to rinse my brush off and give it a dry so we can move on to the black. Get my brush nice and clean. I'm going to go ahead and dry it. All right, so it's nice and dry to the touch. So now we're gonna go ahead and grab our tape. <clears throat> so I've got stencil tape here. If you've got painter's tape at home um, or that frog tape, whatever it is that you like to use when you're painting, go ahead and grab that now. You just want it to be a low tack tape. Exactly, you want it to be low tack. You want it to be for painting. You don't wanna use like duct tape or any, or like scotch tape. That won't work well for this. You wanna make sure it's a, paint, a painter's tape. Or a washi tape works really great for this sort of thing too if you've got some washi tape. So all I did, I just grabbed a strip of tape and I'm going to place it up where I want my black to be above it. So find a spot, say right about there. If you wanted to, you could break your ruler out and measure it and get it perfectly, you know, level on either side. You guys know if you painted before, before, I just like to eyeball things. So it looks about even to me. So that's good for me. So I just wanna make sure I have my edges pressed down well there because we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna paint over this line and we're going to paint it black. So I'm gonna grab some black, some pure black and put it on my palette. And again, make sure your tape is pressed down so it doesn't bleed under. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna paint above that line in black. So super simple guys. All we've done is we've base coated the bottom half red dried it, taped it off, and now we're gonna base coat the top half black. So we just have a half black and half red canvas, nothing fancy yet. We're just kind of setting ourselves up for the pattern and the tree that's gonna go on top of it. We see our cute Good. little tree sleeves painting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> I matched the painting today. Look like a Muppet. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and as you guys can see, folk art really is like a one coat and done sort of paint. You can see the even with red, red often is a very transparent color. And since we're using our folk art acrylics, we only needed one coat and it's perfectly even a perfect coat. We don't need to go back with a second coat, um, which is why I love painting with folk arts because 
I'm really impatient when it comes to painting and I hate having to go back and do second coats when I'm painting something like this. Um, so that's why my folk art is absolutely my go-to paint for painting. And you can go ahead and paint your sides now. I get that question a lot. Um, I always like, if you get, if you painted me before, I always like to wait until the very end or later on after my painting is dried to paint the edges just because otherwise I make a big mess. I get it all over myself and I get it on my sleeves and I get it on my table. So I just like to wait until my painting is dry and then go back later and paint the sides. But if you want to turn your canvas now and paint the sides to match your painting, feel free. But I'm not going to do that. Again, you can see how great this coverage is. All right, nice and smooth. And then again, we're going to go ahead and we can pull the tape off now. Don't need that anymore. I'm going to rinse my brush off and then we're going to hit this with a hairdryer as well. Again, nothing fancy yet. We just have half red and half black. That's it. Somebody said Mickey Mouse. I was just thinking the same thing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it does look like that. <laughs> You're right. That's funny. Okay, so go ahead and dry it. pretty dry. Um, I'm not going to be painting on top of that just yet. So it's, you know, fairly dry to the touch, but that's fine for now. We're going to go ahead and we're going to start painting our buffalo plaid. So this is the fun part. And this is kind of the wow part of the painting. Um, like Kira said, it's a really fun technique. So if you've never done it before, I think you're really going to have a lot of fun and you're going to uh, definitely put this in your painting and craft arsenal to use um, a lot. So I've got my red down here. And again, I've got my tape. So this is stencil tape. If you've got um, painter's tape or washi tape, or like Kira said, any sort of low tack tape, like frog tape or something of that nature, you should make sure it's something that's not gonna pull your paint up as you paint. You want something that's just, well, mask off areas, but it's not going to affect the paint beneath it. So that's important. Um, another thing, just as a reminder, in case you missed it in the beginning, however wide your tape is, is how wide your plaid is going to be. So if you have like a super chunky tape, that's fine. But that is how wide your um, little checkers are going to be of your plaid. So just something to keep in mind. If you want it to be smaller, maybe cut your tape in half or something um, if that's worth it to you. But I think, you know, chunky buffalo plaid is, is cute too. So it's totally up to you. So to start, I'm going to start all the way on the left side. And I'm going to start covering my canvas in stripes of tape. So I've got, I've gone all the way to the left side. I've got a stripe there and I'm going to go right up against it and put a stripe here. And you don't want it to overlap. You want it to be right next to it. Right. I'll show you. So they, they're completely yep. side by side. They're just touching right, butted up right against each other. So they're just, we're going to do a, a full row um, all the way across. And it's going to seem a little bit weird. We're going to be like, why are we covering our entire canvas in tape? But don't worry, just stick with me and it's going to make sense. So again, right up against each other, sort of like shoulder to shoulder. We want all the tape pieces to be touching. You just want to make sure you're covering the red. They're butting up right against the one before it. So we're going to have it basically covered in tape by the end of this first step. And 
And this is just the easy way to make that grid. So some people like to start in the middle. Um, it kind of just depends on your preference. Um, again, I like to eyeball things and it doesn't really bother me if, if things aren't perfect. So that's why I started from left to right, just to make it a little bit simpler. But if you wanted to start in the middle so your, your checkers be sort of centered, that's fine too. Just something to think about for the next time you're doing this technique. Don't get your hair stuck in your tape. Or your sweater. <laughs> for your sweater. <laughs> Important. You have yarn on, I have fur on, it's fine. <laughs> Maybe don't wear such a fuzzy outfit when you do this. <laughs> 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 Things to think about for the next time. We're going out with a bang tonight. It's the last one of the year. <laughs> last one of 2020, we're doing it big. All right. So we're coming up on the end. You, as you can see, the pieces of tape are butted right up against each other. On Zoom, it looks like they're kind of far apart, but in reality, they're not. They're like right on each other. Again, not overlapping, just butted up right against each other. All right, so now we've got it completely covered. Regardless of what size your canvas is, all of the red is covered in strips of the tape that you are choosing to use. So now what you're going to do is you're going to remove every other strip of tape. So I'm leaving the first one, taking the second one off, and I'm hanging on to them. Okay, I'm not going to get rid of it. I'm just going to put it on the end of my table. So I'm just, I don't want to lose that because we're going to reuse that tape. We're not going to waste it. So I'm pulling off the next one. So we're going to have stripes now. So again, keeping the tape, I'm just putting it on the end of my table because I don't want to waste it. Removing the next one. As you can see, it's not pulling my paint up. That's important. That's why we wanted to use this, you know, tape that's made for painting. And then the last one. Okay. So now that we've done that, you can see now we're starting to get that checkered sort of look. We're getting the stripes. So the next thing we're going to do, you probably can guess it, we're going to do the exact same thing going down. So start at the top, and that's where we're going to reuse these stri strips of tape. So we're not going to waste them. We're going to do the same thing here. Start going down. And so this is how, by using the tape as a guide, we're gonna end up with a perfect grid. It's going to be the exactly exact squares. We don't have to worry about any measuring or anything like that. It makes it super simple. You could also, if you didn't wanna rip more tape, just take, and maybe you're gonna do this, Jesse, take from like the second horizontal one and just keep using yeah, that. We're gonna, we're gonna overlap them. Yep. yep, that's exactly right. So that way you don't have to waste all your tape on something like this. Yeah. So now we know what we're going to do. We have an idea. So let, just like Kira said, we're going to grab this one because we know that that's um, our first row. So we're going to go every other, grab the next every other one. And as you can see now, we're starting to reveal that perfect checker pattern. So we don't have to worry about measuring and rulers. And that's just something that drives me nuts. Um, so this makes that whole thing a lot simpler. So now again, so now I'm going to kind of eyeball up the bottom here, but Look guys, we have a perfect checkerboard pattern. It was super simple. We just use our tape as a guide. So it should look something like this. So I'm gonna go over it and I'm gonna rub all of the edges down because we're gonna paint in all these checkers with black. So I wanna make sure that I've got a good seal on all of my edges. I'm, I'm kind of rubbing my finger over all of the squares, all the edges of the tape, just to make sure I don't get any excess bleeding. If there's a little bit of bleeding, it's not a big deal because we're gonna kind of connect them anyway but I don't wanna get a ton of bleeding. So I'm going to go ahead and sort of just make sure those are rubbed down, sort of like um, just burnishing them with my finger, making sure I don't have any, any gaps or anything popping up. All right, so once you have your checkerboard like this, I'm gonna grab one of my flat brushes. I'll just go back to my 3 4 inch flat and I'm going to very gently fill in those areas with black. I don't want to put a ton of paint because I really don't want it to bleed, but I just want to cover in all of my little checkerboard areas. Grab a little more paint. So we're just filling in the areas that we just um, created with our tape, with our tape guides. And again, I'm not being, I'm not, you know, going back and forth, I'm not being really excessive with my brush because that's kind of how you get it bleeding under your tape. I'm just very lightly putting a nice, light, quick coat, 
not a ton of paint, just enough to cover it. My brush doesn't have a ton of paint on it because again, I just am trying to avoid bleeding under the tape. We don't want that. If you have a stencil brush at home, if you're familiar with stenciling, that's a great way to do this too. And that's a really good way to avoid bleeding to sort of act like this is a stencil here and pounce it. But a lot of you probably don't have a stencil brush at home. That's just totally fine. So we're just gonna very gently paint over these squares. Nothing fancy, just covering the squares in black. Any black acrylic paint. Again, not a ton of paint on my brush because that's how we get bleeding and we, we're trying to avoid that. Just enough paint on my brush to get a nice even coat covering up all the red. We don't want to see any red once we've done this, once with our tape down. So all the red should be covered up now for this step. All right, so you can see here now, we don't have any red left. It's all black right now, black and tape that's visible. Cleaning off my brush. And now is the fun part. Now is the fun sort of reveal. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull our tape off. So be careful because the tape is wet. So the tape wants to curl up and you might get, you know, the paint's gonna get a little bit messy. So just be careful. So we're gonna pull it up. We're gonna pull off up this and I'm gonna toss it now because the tape has paint on it. You're only pull pull, <laughs> pulling horizontal, correct? Not vertical. We're pulling all. Okay. I'm starting with um, the horizontal because that's the top layer, but we're going to pull all the tape up. So if you want to just go ahead and try to pull the whole thing, go for it. Yeah, we're pulling all the tape up right now. I'm just starting with uh, the horizontal, like Kira said, because that's my top layer. Just to make it a little easier for myself. Now we have really perfect squares on our canvas. We just made those. You saw how simple that was. It's just the simplest technique to make super easy grid of squares. And then of course, for the next step, I'm gonna show you how to um, continue that pattern to turn it into a buffalo plaid effect. I'm getting- It's literally the best way and so satisfying to make this buffalo plaid. <laughs> I love it. Really it really is so easy. All right, so your canvas should look a little something like this. You should have sort of a checkerboard thing going on. It looks kind of like a, what's that sort of fence called, like in a garden? Like lattice? Like Maybe? lattice, yeah. It looks like lattice now, exactly. Whew, got that one right. <laughs> I, I, I can never think of that word for some reason. I'm such so a gardener. Have... <laughs> so we're gonna go ahead now, guys, and we're gonna dry this because you want our black to be dry for this next step. So go ahead, if you have a hair dryer, and we wanna dry it uh, completely. squares are all nice and dry now. So what we're going to do next is I'm going to grab my um, number 12 flat brush. So this is about a half inch flat brush. Um, so whatever you have at home, whatever size tape you used, you're going to want to try to use a brush that's similar to that width. So I used this, um, you know, three quarters or so inch tape and my brush almost matches that width. So can you guys see what I mean there? It almost is the same width as that tape. So you, if you use this giant chunky tape, you'd maybe want to find a bigger brush that sort of is the same width as this tape. So do your best. If you can't, if you don't have a brush that big or something, that's fine. But do your best to find a brush that's a similar width to the tape you use, and you're going to see why in a second. So I, I have a half inch um, flat brush because that's about a good width for for the size of my squares that I created. And what I'm going to do is I have some black on my palette. Hopefully you guys have some in your palette. If not, go ahead and add some more. And I'm going to pick up some water 
and I'm going to water it down a little bit. So I want this to be pretty watery. So it's going to be sort of like a watercolor consistency. So you can see here now on my side, it's getting, I want you to be able to see kind of how watery the paint is. It's, it's super watery. You guys can see on my palette how, how watery it is there. Can you see it well, Kira? Yes. Okay, good. So I have that on my brush. It's kind of like a water, like, like we're using black watercolor almost. You watered it down to about that consistency. And what we're going to do is we are going to use this consistency of paint to connect each of our blocks. So I'm going to hold it up so you guys can see it. Yeah, hold it up. Um, yep, perfect. So can you see? So all I'm going to do is I'm going to just follow my little squares and I'm going to connect all of my squares using this watered down paint. So what you end up getting is what looks like layers of color. It looks like a dark red between them, just like would be in Buffalo Plaid, but all we did was we just watered down the black and then the red beneath it makes it look a darker red. And they don't have to be perfect. It's almost that rustic uh, Buffalo check. So Absolutely. don't be intimidated do by just pushing it down and pulling it. Exactly. So that's why it helps to have a brush that's a similar width. So you can kind of, it's really nice if you have the exact width, you can kind of just do one little stroke and be done with it. If not, as you can see here, you just want it to be the same width as your squares or about the same as, as much as you can get it. And all I'm doing is I'm connecting it. I'm sort of just extending all of my little areas out to make it look like it's real Buffalo plaid. So I'm gonna go up here. Yeah, don't ever think that part. Yeah, don't ever think it. It's just watered down paint and you're just using the flat edge of your brush, your advantage to just connect those. That's it. It's like connecting the dots. We're just connecting the dots here. We all did that when we were little. It's like that old school game where you had to like draw the line and put your initial in it. Yeah, yeah, like that little square game and you want yes. to get more square. It's exactly like that. I used to play that with my mom all the time. So we're just connecting all of these squares and you can see I'm kind of doing it with no rhyme or reason, but by the end, they're all going to be connected. I'm not being very methodical about it. I put it down. So hopefully you guys are able to see that. It's easier for me to see it this way. <laughs> and again, we're just connecting all of these dots with really watered down black paint. It's better to be a little more watery than less. So if you're not sure the right consistency, I say um, err on the side of more watery you can always go back over and add more but as you can see there like if it's too dark it's kind of hard to remove and you kind of just end up having a, a crisscross grid of black again so you want to make sure like i said it sort of air on the side of too watery because you can always go back over it with a second coat and make it a little darker and we're just going to connect these stripes or these blocks with stripes super super simple Kira did a live stream um, earlier this year for fall and she made a sign and she did like a cream colored background and then did the black over it and that was really cute for fall. It looks super farmhousey. Um, like I said, you could do like a blue and white pattern for spring and make it look kind of like gingham. That'd be super cute. You can do so many different um, sort of looks, different styles with this exact pattern and technique. So, so easy and simple. It's great for sign making. You could stencil on top of this now and make really cute signs. Again, we're just connecting each of our squares. Just really watered down. You can see how all of a sudden we just have buffalo plaid. It was so simple. There was no <laughs> ruler involved. There was no measuring or lining up or anything like that. All you needed was tape and paint. And it's so, and it's absolutely perfect. Because we just use the tape as our guide for the grid. I'm just sort of continuing it down off my, my canvas so it looks like it's a complete pattern. All right, so super, super simple. I hope that was really easy for you guys. And I hope you learned something.
Yep, some people are asking where they can find the fall um, live video. If you go to Plaid's Facebook channel, if you go to videos, you should be able to find it. It's probably about like, I wanna say it was in September, mm -hmm. um, but you can definitely see it there. It'll say, I think it says like, hey fall on it. So you'll definitely be able to see that on Plaid's Facebook channel. Yeah, so I'm gonna go yeah. ahead and dry it, guys. <laughs> Right now. So as you guys can see, I just want to reiterate, like Kira said, it's not perfect. Hopefully you can see that it's absolutely not perfect, but it looks perfect from far away. And that's kind of the point. This is just a background. So we're going to paint our tree over it. If there's any little inconsistencies or anything that's not perfect to you, you're not going to see it once you put the Christmas tree on top of it. It just looks really great for our background. Okay. So with that said, we're kind of done with our background now. We're going to get into the Christmas tree portion, which is another really great, quick, easy way to paint Christmas trees. So a lot of people love, um, you know, always want to paint things like this. It's a very common sort of um, subject matter, especially for this time of year, just pine trees or, you know, evergreen trees. Um, and it can intimidate people a little bit. People are always kind of want to do like that whole like Bob Ross style of painting with like the fan brush, but that's a little bit harder than it looks. Bob Ross makes it look very easy. This is a super, super simple way of painting evergreen trees. So if you didn't it. want to go Christmassy, you could do black and white and just like a pretty winter tree. Absolutely, you could. Yeah, it'd just be great for like you said, like winter time. You could even put snow on it and just make it a sweet little winter painting. Absolutely. It doesn't need to be a Christmas tree at all. Um, okay, so we're going to go ahead and we are going to grab our um, hunter green. So like I said, we have two greens. We've got hunter green and clover. What's really important is just that we have a darker and a lighter green. So if you don't have these two exact ones, that's fine. If you have like clover and like a lime green, one lighter than that, the clover will be the darker color. That's totally fine. Just make sure you have a darker and a lighter green. So right now I'm gonna grab the darker of my two greens. So whichever darker green you're gonna be using. And I'm going to grab my number four round brush so any round brush will do. Mine's kind of like small or medium. I, I kind of wish that I had a, a, a larger brush for this, but I just want, I didn't want to throw you guys for a loop with a different brush pack, but this one will totally work. So any medium to large round brush you have will be good. And all we're going to do right now is we're going to just sort of paint a straight line going down our canvas, which is going to be sort of the, the trunk of our tree. It's, it's going to disappear. So if you don't have it perfect, that's fine. It's just kind of kind of um, lay it out for us so we know where our tree is going to be. So we just want to do as straight as we can. If you want to grab your um, ruler out, if that makes you feel better, or even just any sort of straight edge, grab a piece of printer paper or something, if that makes you more comfortable, by all means, go ahead and do that. But we want to start about here. So a few inches from the top. And then we're going to go down to about here, a few inches from the bottom, just to kind of mark it. I know it's tough for you guys to see, but just on your own, on your own canvases, mark where you want the tree to start and stop. So here and then here. So just mark that off. And then all we're gonna do is just sort of a sketchy line. I, I barely have any paint on my brush. Just a very loose line, trying my best to keep it in the middle. I know people kind of struggle with um struggle with straight lines, but don't stress about it because it's going to get covered up by all these branches. We just kind of want to have a visual reference for ourselves, something to kind of base our branches off of. So if your line is thicker than this, that's totally fine too. It's all going to get covered up. We just want to kind of lay out where our tree is going to be so it doesn't get crooked as we're painting all of the branches um, of our tree. Okay, so we have a nice straight-ish line. Again, it's not perfect because I didn't use a ruler, but I can see where my line's gonna be. So go ahead and do that. 
I'll give everyone just one second to do that. Yep. In case you wanted to get a ruler or something. Yep. And don't forget, I just put it in the chat that you can watch this um, on demand on Michael's community classroom page after the fact. So if you need to go back, you want to repaint, you missed something, you can always go back and watch it. Um, it's hard, you know, to kind of keep up with everybody's speed with so many people. So we appreciate everybody being patient if you're ahead or, um, you know, or being able to go back and catch up after the fact. It's hard exactly. to find a happy medium. <laughs> yeah, and also to keep it in an hour. <laughs> Michael's yeah. is very generous with their time. They let us go over a lot, but we our yeah. goal is always to keep it in an hour. <laughs> yeah. Okay, all right. So once you have your line painted in, um, I clean my brush off just so my paint wouldn't dry, but we're gonna hang on to our number four round brush. That's what I'm using and our darker green color. We're gonna hang on to those for just a second. So we're gonna start at the top. And what we're going to do is we're going to start in the middle and then sort of do wisps to the left and right. So here, I'll do some right here on my palette just so you can see it a little bit better because I know it's hard to see that dark green against the black. So I'm going to start at the top and I'm going to pull down to the left, pull down to the right. And what's important about doing this is that you don't want to just pull down to the left and stop and pull it onto the right and stop because you can see that that's not as cute as the top one. So you don't want to have that hard stop. You want to do that flick at the end, sort of lift your brush up as you go feather it sort of, flick, flick. Again, if you just do line, 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 it looks like that and that's not as cute. So you wanna have a nice soft feathery looking pine tree. So it's a really important to do that flick at the end of each. So that's what we're gonna do here. And we're gonna kind of start smaller at the top and then get a little wider as we go. So flick, flick, flick. And we're just- I think it helps fill. if you say flick, totally say okay. it. I'll say the whole thing. <laughs> you're gonna want to mute me after a second. Flick, flick. We're gonna flick our little brush all the way down. We're gonna fill up this whole tree with these little branches. And it's really great um, to practice if you're a painter um, or if you're just getting started in painting. It's really important to practice when you're using a round brush because um, it's kind of like muscle memory. You kind of get a feel of the way a round brush works or a liner brush or whatever it is that you're using any brush really, if you press down on it, you get a thicker line. If you just put very little pressure on it, you get a thinner line. So you really only need a couple of brushes to paint these paintings. You don't need all the different sizes that brush packs generally come with. It's great to have the variety in case you need it, but I, you, if you've painted with me before, you know that I kind of stick to like three brushes because you can get a lot of the same shapes um, and lines and things like that with just a few brushes, just changing the pressure that you're putting on the brush. So I can press down harder to get thicker lines to fill it in a little more, but I'm continuing to flick it starting in the center going left and right flicking my brush. That's important to get that nice soft wispy edge. And I'm getting you can see I'm getting a little making my strokes a little longer as I go down so my breath my tree is getting wider. If this was a smaller painting, if it wasn't such a long painting, um, it would be a little more dramatic. It would be skinny and then it would get fat more quickly, but it's going to be sort of the same width going down just so we can fill up this long painting. It's just kind of a cute style um, to hang in your home. So that's why we're going to keep it sort of the same width for a few inches down here. You could almost do like a cute Charlie Brown tree too with this. Like yeah, you, you could kind of last. Uh huh. That'd be really cute. You could put ornaments um, on it. You definitely could. Like this is such a fun painting because you can do treasure gold ornaments. You can do red and green ornaments on it. You could like Kira said, just keep it a winter tree and do like a black and white buffalo plaid and then just do maybe even some snow on your tree. That would be so cute. Um, so treasure gold would be really cute. Like use the back of your brush and do dots. Just treasure gold dots would be adorable. Ooh, yes. and glitter. Glitter, yes. You can never go wrong with glitter. I love that. So again, we're just filling up our tree. And like we said in the, in the beginning, if you have a square canvas, if you don't have a long canvas like this, you might want to do two trees, do a small one and a, or a large one and a small one just to kind of fill up your canvas. So it's just the same exact technique, just do it, you know, sort of overlapping each other just to fill up that space so it doesn't look empty. It's a great idea. Or do it to the side and then stencil your family's name on it or something like that. There's lots of ways to kind of just adapt this painting to whatever it is that you're doing. Yeah, you could put a little bit of snow or glitter or like white for snow or glitter on the tips to make it look like it, you know. So cute. 
yeah, and this checker, someone's asking, you can do any color for your checker. Like, so you could do white, blue, black, green. You could do treasure yeah. gold. You could do, you know, really any color. Yeah, like if you just have like black and white and gold, you know, yeah. Christmas decorations, do a black and white background and then do gold ornaments on your tree. By all means, you can totally, like I said, adapt this painting to however you want it. So I'm gonna go back a little, I'm getting towards the bottom now. I'm kind of just gonna fill around the front center because I don't want it to just be, I don't wanna see that trunk. So I'm kind of filling it around the bottom and I'm gonna go back and sort of fluff it, fill it in a little more here and there, make it wider in some places. Just filling it in and I'm just going back over it. So once you have sort of this dark color, you sort of laid out the composition of your tree. You like the shape of it. You like the size of it. We're gonna go ahead with the second green color. So whatever that is for you, maybe this was, maybe you're using clover as your darker green and you want like a lime green for the lighter color, that's fine. We're gonna go to the lighter green color. I'm not gonna wash my brush off. My brush still has paint on it but I'm gonna put some, for me, I'm gonna put some clover on my palette, my lighter green. And then I'm just gonna go back with this lighter color and sort of fill it in to give it some highlights because when you look at a tree, of course, you don't just see a flat green shape. There's dark greens, there's light greens, there's middle greens, there's all different values of greens. And that's what makes it look like it's textured and it's dimensional. So that's kind of the look we have here for our final painting. And that's how we did it, by going back in with another green and just adding some of that texture. So all I'm gonna do is right on top of the wet green, I'm gonna go in and it, it's gonna sort of blend together, which is what we want. We're going right back over it while it's wet. And we're just putting some strokes here and there. We're not covering it up completely with the lighter green. We're just sort of highlighting it and adding some strokes here and there using the same stroke that we did before. Just sort of here, it's kind of shiny. You can't really see it that well. Is that better? Yeah, that's better. I feel like perfect. the paint is shiny. I can't see it. Yeah, because so it's wet. Uh huh. That's perfect. Okay, good. And it's crazy how it blends. It looks like more than two colors. Like it looks exactly. like it gives it so much depth and dimension. Right, and that's a benefit of painting with wet on wet. If we had let the the dark green dry and went back over it, it would still be pretty, but it, you wouldn't have that sort of blended effect, which is what we're going for. So you can see I'm doing some in the middle here too, not just on the sides this time. I've got some to the sides but I kind of have them going down here in the middle as well. So you can sort of, it looks like it's round in the front. It's not a flat tree. Jesse, what size is your round brush? Um, I'm using a number four round. Number four. Yeah. A larger or smaller will work though. This is but just the one. Round is kind of the, the key. Yeah, I would recommend a round brush. If you don't have a round brush, if you have just your flat brushes, you can use that, but make sure you use the chiseled edge. Don't go flat make sure you put it on its side. So you're using like that skinny edge, if that makes sense. You don't want to be going like, you can't even really see what I'm doing. You don't want to be going like this. You want to put it on its side, if that makes any sense at all. Got it. So if you, if you don't have a round brush, yeah, make sure you do it that way. Great option. But, which is and again, we're doing this kind of quick because so we can have the greens blend together because we love that blended look. just sort of highlights on our tree. Looks really layered this way. It looks great. Which course, yeah, which of course is how a tree is. It's layered, just filled with different size and shape and branches all through it. All right, so now you can kind of go back and see, you know, take a look if you want to add any more light areas. Sort of fill it in. Okay. And that is it for the tree portion. You can see just how simple that was and how it looks like we have like 10, like here said, like 10 different green colors in there when we really just have two because they blended together to get all the colors in between. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and dry that with my hair dryer before we start on the next step. So just take a second to finish up your tree. So it is mostly dry, which is fine. We're not going to be doing much painting on top of it. I just want it to be super wet for the next step. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to grab our treasure gold. So um, I love to use treasure gold in paintings. I really have trouble not adding treasure gold to paintings. So um, it's just really pretty. I say this every time. So sorry if you've heard me say this a million times, but it is the shiniest acrylic paint that I've ever used. So Usually if you want something that's super metallic and super like mirror shiny, it's going to be smelly. It's going to be like a solvent base, like alcohol base. And you don't want to use it in your house. It's got fumes. Um, but this one is just as safe as our other paints. It's water-based and non-toxic. And it is like crazy shiny. It's like mirror shiny. You can like see a reflection in it. So I highly recommend if you have not tried Treasure Gold to go ahead and pick some of that up um, at your local Michaels or on um, michaels.com because it is such, such a great paint comes in all different colors, different golds, jewel tones. I just can't say enough good things about it. It's so beautiful on the black. Yes, it looks so good on black, as you're about to see. All right, so for the next step, I'm gonna go ahead, I cleaned off my number four round brush. So this was the brush that we were just using for our um, branches in our tree. And I'm gonna grab some treasure gold and I'm going to put like a good glow. This is for a star for our tree. So if you don't want a star on your tree, if you want yours to just be more of a winter tree and not so much a Christmas tree, you can kind of just skip this step um, and just wait until we do some of the um, other treasure gold areas. But if you want the star, this is how you do it. I'm going to put like a good, very generous blob of treasure gold right at the top. You want a good bit of paint on there. I don't normally sort of suggest applying paint in a blob. That's not really uh, something I usually aim for. But for this, you want to have a good little puddle of paint right there. So just up, right at the top of my tree, and I'm going to wipe most of the paint off my brush. I'm not going to clean it. And I'm going to just sort of flick that blob of paint out in every direction to make it look like it's a shining star. So I'm just going to grab that blob of paint. That's why we wanted so much paint there. And just flick it out in every direction. And so it's just a really easy way to make a shining star on the top of your tree without having to, you know, paint a fancy star because it's kind of hard sometimes. So just a blob of paint and then use that same technique to just do flicks in every direction um, with that pu little puddle of paint. Super easy. Uh, and like Kira said, I love the idea of using like the end of your brush and dipping in treasure gold and making ornaments all over your tree. That'd be so pretty. So if, if you're doing the whole Christmas tree thing, I highly recommend that. That sounds really cute. Um, but again, if not, this is a good technique for either way. Uh, we're going to be adding some of this sort of rustic, shimmery gold to the edges of our painting to make it look a little more um, rustic and maybe a little distressed, but it still kind of has that like glitz and glam to it. So to do that, I have my three fourths inch flat brush to the largest brush that I've been using. And I'm going to put a little bit of treasure gold on it, but I'm going to wipe some of it off. I don't want a ton of paint on my brush. So as you can see here, there's really not very much paint on my brush. I kind of wipe most of it off. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to focus on the very edges of my painting and I'm going to start from the outside and pull in and I'm going to sort of just drag my brush on the edges. You can kind of even go up and down, just a dry brush. You don't want a ton of paint on it because you want to kind of be able to control where your paint is. Okay, I'm kind of just dragging my bristles on my canvas. So you can see here, just sort of these like really pretty strokes of gold that just when they catch the light, it just gives a little bit of something extra to the painting. It makes it look really just festive. 
So like if you were doing like we talked about before, like sort of a snowy uh, scene instead of just this Christmasy one, you could do like the silver treasure gold. Well, silver really would be pretty. really pretty. Or silver yeah, and gold, you could mix them. Oh, that'd be so pretty. I love that Or idea. like the blue aqua color would be really pretty with black and white. Ooh, yeah. Oh, I can't wait to see everybody's paintings. I'm so excited. I know. <laughs> so you guys, that's great. We didn't talk about this. So if you haven't already, go to our Let's Paint with Plaid Facebook group. It is a um, amazing community that we have started. And Jesse and Andy and all our talent, um, talented artists are on there answering questions. We have a ton of education. Um, you can get all your supplies at Michael's and paint along um, with Andy. Like I said, Donna Dewberry, Chris Williams, Jesse is on there. But definitely you wanna check that out. Um, you know, between your Michael's classes, absolutely check yes. that out and you could post your painting that you do we love to see and comment on what you make it's like the best part of our job so you can hashtag paint with plaid or i'm sorry plaid crafts making up words hashtag plaid crafts <laughs> hashtag make it with michaels yes gosh i'm tired much jesse much and i have been here a long time today <laughs> it has been a long day for us and it's a, a holiday day. week so we're like Extra I know. Tired. Yeah. So hashtag flag craft, hashtag make it with Michael. So we can see your paintings. <laughs> we love to see them. That's again, love, like the best part love, of this. Seriously, as much as I love painting on Monday nights, I really, my favorite part is waking up Tuesday morning and getting in the group <laughs> and seeing everybody's waiting for the night before. It's so fun. Yeah. Everybody, like everybody comes in. Did you see that painting? So it's really fun. Yeah. We all get to look at them. You see, yeah. So-and-so's painting on the group. Oh, they did so great. Yeah. I love it. All right, so as you guys, you guys can see, I've just kind of been dragging my brush around. Again, very dry brush, hardly any paint in my brush. I've just been dragging it on the edges. I did a few sort of over my tree um, as Kira was talking. So just really dry, pretty brush strokes around it. Um, you can even go back and add some snow, like with a toothbrush um, and some white and just sort of flick your toothbrush around it and create some sort of speckled snow effect. That would be really pretty for this painting. Um, but yeah, guys, make sure you sign it. And that is it for our uh, our plaid, our buffalo plaid Christmas tree. It's so, the so stunning. This might be one of my favorites of the year. Oh, thanks, Kira. Yeah, it's a good it's one. Really fun Great gift. You could still make this in time for a gift. Yes, absolutely. This is, you saw, this is a super quick one. So yeah. now you've done it once, well, do it again and, and give it to your family and loved ones for Christmas. I love that idea. Yeah. All right, well guys, thank you so much. Again, happy holidays. Thank you, Michaels. Uh, thank you, Jesse, you guys. We've had an amazing year being with you guys. So we can't thank you enough. Um, you know, we can't wait to see you in January. It'll be January 4th next time we see you guys. So um, Andy and I will be here. And again, thank you so much. Everybody stay safe and have, you know, great holiday. And thank you everybody. So bye guys, bye for the last time in 2020. I know, bye, bye 2021. 2021. <laughs> <laughs> bye, guys. We see you. Bye, guys. Thank you.